Hi guys, today we're going to be showing you how to do drum replacement within Logic 9. So you'd want to do drum replacement if you're not completely happy with the audio that uh, you've recorded. Um, you'd just be replacing it with a pre-recorded sound through something like BFD. Or today we're going to be using Ultrabeat, which is what comes with Logic 9. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is create a software instrument. That's going to come up here. Now the important thing to do here is to make sure that this track, the software instrument track that you've just created, is highlighted. Okay, because you're telling the computer that that's where you want the replaced sound to go. Okay, the MIDI information that we're going to create in a minute, that's where you want it to go. Okay, so after that's selected, you want you to double click the region that you want to replace. So in this case, it's going to be the snare. Okay, I'm just going to whiz it on a bit to find some of the transients. Okay. So after you've done this, so after you've done this, I want you to go to factory. Sorry, uh, yeah, factory. Audio to score. It's going to come up with this little nifty thing. Here. Okay, what's important to notice here is that it's come up with all of these um, lines underneath the transients, and that's saying that wherever this line is, that's going to create a little bit of MIDI information. But saying you've picked up this transient, so I, I'm going to replace that with a hit, and then you're going to tell it what the hit's going to be. Um, okay, so within this box, because it's a reasonably fast drum beat, I've just changed that to drum fast. The only other thing that you really want to change on here is uh, velocity threshold, and if we change that back down to zero, back down to one, sorry, you can see all these little lines start to appear here, and that's because you've got all these little transients. In between the bigger ones and that's where you've got the kick drum hitting or a cymbal smashing or something and it's picked it up in the audio and although it's quite a tiny little transient it's still picking it up so what you can do is if you turn if you turn up the velocity threshold they're going to start to disappear okay and what you want to make sure is that you've only got lines underneath the actual hits of the snare because otherwise you're going to have snare hits where there's a crash or a kick and where there isn't one. So I'm just turning it up to get rid of all of these little ones. I'm just having a quick scan through. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to turn it up a couple more just to make sure. Okay, so after you've done all that, all you need to do then is click process. Now what that's done is it's taken all the transients that you've had in your um, in your sample editor and it's put it into a score. But you can see that all the notes are very different. So we need to change those so they're all going to be exactly the same notes. Okay, so to do that, you need to press Apple or Command and A. And that's going to select all the notes. Okay. And then over here where it says 222 notes selected, I want you to hold down Alt and click once on pitch. That's going to change it all to the same ones, okay? Now take your finger off of Alt and drag, click and drag up the note until it hits C1. And it's going to change all the notes on that to C1, if you can see there, okay? After you've done that, simply close your score window, get rid of your sample editor, and you will see that what was once the empty track, the empty software instrument track, is now got some MIDI information. So if you open up the piano roll editor, you'll see that we've got all of these MIDI information, all this MIDI information. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is where all of the hits of the snare are. Okay. So the first thing we want to do now is select them all, which again, Command A or Apple A, and then go to Functions, Transform, Exponential Velocity. That's going to bring that up there. Okay. Um, what you may find is it, let's see. there we go. It should come up like this. Under status or status, depending on your place in the universe. Um, click that to all. And it's going to get rid of that completely. Then where it says expon, I want you to change that to random. Okay, and it's going to give you two samples here. Okay, so if you change those. I'm going to change that to about 95, and then the next one to 105. Then what's that 
that is basically doing is it's going to take all every single MIDI note that you've got there it's going to change the velocity of it to somewhere a random figure between 95 and 105 so after you've done that click operate and you'll see the colors change to a nice yellow and that means that they're pretty much near enough the same velocity okay because otherwise because what happens quite often when you're doing drum replacement in logic is the velocity is always stupidly slow so you have to turn them all up so this is just a quick way of doing it right so after you've done that if you hit play you're not going to hear anything it's because solely the snare there's nothing from that and that's because we haven't put the software instrument in yet so over here if you go you've got your in and output so it's output into my stereo if you click on the input and go down to ultra beat it's going to bring up our ultra beat sound okay and if you go up to where it says default and you've got something called drum banks and if you go onto acoustic kick kick bank no not kick because we're not doing kick we're doing snare so on the snare bank right and then you can close it afterwards and what's that basically done is that it's put a different sounding snare on each of these keys okay so if we click here you can see that that's what it sounds like at the minute so i'm playing that and then if we move that up one it's going to have a nice reverb 80s sound Another. so you just want to find one that you like Just leave it there. We can let's move it up to the okay. So, to move it up, select all of them again. Now, a tip to do is up here where it says snap. If we had that down on ticks or frames or something like that, what that means is it's going to move it by a little bit of a, at a time. So, if we click and we're moving, it up, you see it moving from side to side quite easily. Okay, we don't want it to do that because if you move it slightly out, it's going to be slightly out of time with everything else. So, to not do that, if you click and leave it on bar, that means that even if you move your mouse just to the side a little bit, it's not going to move anywhere because it's only going to move in bars. You see that? Okay, so it's just a quick tip to do that first because otherwise you'll accidentally move it out of time. So, let's put it up to there and see how that sounds. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. Okay, and that's basically what you do. So now that's on your mixer. So if we hear that with the rest of the kick now. Because you've done that as well, if you go into your mixer, it's going to come up with its own channel. You've got the ultra beat here. I've already done the kick drum on this one as well because it, it comes with a kick trigger. Um, you can still put all of your in, uh, inserts and your sends and your EQ. You can do everything that you want with it. You still got your full functionality with that, but it's just you've got the program sound instead of the original sound. Okay, guys. I hope that helps you out. For now, I'll see you next time. Bye.